Next Sunday, three famous men share a secret that could destroy them in the blockbuster miniseries based on the bestseller, Celebrity. Be there. You've played NBC's game shows at home. Now's your chance to win at home. For the next three weeks, you'll have a chance to win big prizes, cash, and even your very own Florida dream house in television's most exciting giveaway events ever. So play at home and you might be one of the lucky winners. But you won't win if you don't play. Be there. Next on News 4 New York, there is news tonight from the Challenger. That lost satellite in space is found, but it is probably useless. In Lebanon, the Prime Minister and his entire cabinet resign. We'll tell you why. Also ahead tonight, a tragic accident in Manhattan startles an entire neighborhood. And a courageous actress reaches out to help others. Tonight on News 4 New York, that's next. It's here. The first Nissan 300ZX, a technological marvel. Computerized, digitalized, civilized. The new 300ZX, powered by a new turbocharged V6. This sports car is awesome. Come alive, come and die. Made to motion from Nissan. At your Datsun dealer. The cold air mass coming in from the west will be joined that Canadian cold front coming down from the north, sending temperatures plummeting. It's cold out there in the weather. Come in out of the cold to the Meadowlands for a great change of pace. For just a little while longer, Burger King would like you to remember. Remember the fire. Remember the flame. Remember 39 cents for a flame broiled burger at Burger King. Remember the sizzle. Remember the juice. 39 cents for a flame broiled burger at Burger King. Remember the taste. Remember the price. 39 cents for a flame broiled burger at participating Burger King restaurants. Now remember this. If you find any other burger for 39 cents, it's probably fried. Neighborhoods, Tuesday at 6 on News 4 New York. From WNBC TV, this is News 4 New York with Ralph Penza and Anna Bond. Good evening. That missing satellite has been found, but the bad news is it's in the wrong orbit. It didn't blow up after all. Despite the earlier reports, the West Star 6 satellite launched from the space shuttle Challenger two days ago was said to be completely healthy, but not in the 22,300 mile high orbit it is supposed to be in. The Western Union area says it doubts it will get much use out of the communications satellite. Still finding it in one piece has given renewed confidence to the launching of a second satellite tomorrow. And the astronauts aboard the Challenger certainly welcomed that encouraging news after another project went haywire today. The astronauts launched a balloon in a canister that was to inflate and be the object of a 17,500 mile an hour game of tag. The shuttle chasing it to practice for future missions involving repair of satellites. But the balloon blew up and here was the bad news relayed. Uh, yeah, it looks like the balloon blew up. I'm tracking a, a very large piece of plastic. It's painted white on one side and dark olive grab the black on the other side. In other activities, the astronauts checked out the ship's 50-foot mechanical arm. It will be used during the most exciting aspect of the flight, those free-flying spacewalks scheduled for Tuesday and for Thursday. As for Westar, the wayward satellite, NASA scientists believe now that the Westar's rocket motor misfired and failed to propel the satellite high enough into proper orbit. Today, the government of Indonesia, though, gave the go-ahead for the launching of their communications satellite tomorrow. Anna? And Ralph, back here on Earth, after a brief spell of spring-like temperatures, winter came back to terrorize the country. Arctic air and blinding blizzards are responsible for at least 11 deaths in the Plains states. The blizzards spewed out winds of more than 60 miles an hour. Motorists in several states, from Illinois to Minnesota, found themselves stranded on the roads. Some had to be rescued by the National Guard. The swirling snow caused whiteouts so severe that even the snow plows could not get through. The National Weather Service says that the storm system is heading for the East Coast. 
Now, our area had a sneak preview today of the surprise storm. Heavy snowflakes fell, accumulating in the suburbs, but turning to heavy raindrops in the city. The weather conditions made traveling treacherous and driving dangerous. A charter bus skidded off the New York State Thruway today near New Paltz, New York, falling down an embankment and flipping over on its side. Seven of the 21 people on board were injured, but none of them seriously. Ralph? Off Long Island today, the Coast Guard and the Nassau County Police Marine Bureau raised the boat that had carried one of six men aboard to his death. The men were on an inspection ride. One of them, 66-year-old Hugh McMillan of Ocean City, New Jersey, was considering buying the skiff along with his son. A big wave turned the boat over. McMillan's 32-year-old son, Daniel, struggled to hold on to his father, but the victim was swept away in the waves. The others held on for over two hours before they were rescued. You can just see the boat turned over there in the water. Two of the survivors were still hospitalized today, and the Coast Guard is investigating the accident. Huh? And fire officials have begun an investigation into an apartment building on Quincy Street in Brooklyn to find out why all of its units except one had electricity last night. That single apartment caught fire late last night, killing nine-month-old Coletta Martin. The infant's mother was out when the flames began to spread. 20-year-old Denise Martin said that she was on her way to the store to buy candles. Mrs. Martin said, that other candles had been burning in the apartment, but she snuffed them out before leaving. Mrs. P Martin did manage to save her two-year-old son from the flames. He was hospitalized with burns. And we have a sad drama to tell you about. It unfolded on a midtown Manhattan street today. A fine-looking horse, a member of the police mounted patrol, lying on the ground with a broken leg, a police officer drawing a gun and putting the animal out of its misery with one shot. A report on the incident from Jim Van Sickle. A woman looking on wept at what she'd seen. The mounted policeman, Eugene Kempton, was pale and shaken, and there was anguish written on the face of the cab driver, Joseph Kirschenbaum. The horse ran across the intersection, and I couldn't stop. The horse was named Red, and the police had ambulances and their own vehicles drawn tight around the scene against inquisitive eyes, and... We saw the animal with a, uh, a very bad fracture. One of our other officers uh, wound up shooting the animal. About 9.45 this morning, the officer tied up the horse in order to go on a personal necessity. The horse apparently broke loose, come down 44th Street. I tried to stop the cab, that's all. What else goes through my head? The cab had no way of avoiding the animal. And the onlookers gathered, drawn by the tragic scene. The cab driver, badly shaken. The police officer, whose horse that was, equally shaken, white, not willing to speak at all. And shortly, the sanitation department will come and remove the horse. Jim Van Sickle, News 4, Manhattan. As you probably gathered, no charges were filed against the taxi driver, the police saying that it was not his fault. What made that horse break and run into traffic is still a mystery. Coming up, some Manhattan officials are calling for a change on the Upper West Side, the Upper East Side, that is, and we'll tell you what they have in mind. And one neighborhood group rallies against a rent hike. We'll tell you about that, too. Winners, Scotch video cassettes for having pioneered and perfected videotape. Watching your favorites day after day, keeping the wonder play after play, knowing the color and brightness of stay. Only from Scotch, our cobalt encapsulated oxide for world class clarity. The world watches, world watches Scotch. Buy Scotch video cassettes with a new VCR and get a free protection plan. We all dream, but for most of us, our dreams remain dreams. George, you put the garbage out yet? But now your dream could come true with Lucky Dream Wingo. With $3 million in cash and prizes to win, the richest Wingo game ever. Prizes like this super Plymouth Voyager. And cash. The Post has already paid out $6.5 million in prize money. Now it could be your turn. George, tell me I'm not dreaming. It's true. We won. <laughs> so don't just dream. Play Lucky Dream Wingo in the New York Post. Chemical Bank introduces 28 pages of good reasons to bring all your banking to chemical. The Chem Store Discount Catalog. 
where you can get all the things you've ever dreamed of at prices you haven't. You can get huge discounts on everything from six-piece luggage sets to 14-carat jewelry, up to 50% off a gorgeous sable coat, up to 30% off a stretch limousine. You can even save on a luxurious 16-day vacation to France. Discounts on everything from famous name cookware to dinner with a famous name soap opera star. And it's simple. The more accounts you give us, the more discounts we give you. Ma'am? Ma'am? All we need now is your signature. My autograph, darling. My autograph. Chemical Bank's discount catalog from Chemical Bank. Negotiators met for the first time in four days to try to end the meat strike, but today's talks ended with no settlement in sight. 7,000 butchers and delicatessen workers at four supermarket chains walked out 22 days ago when the union's three-year contract expired. The strike is affecting 334 stores run by Food Town, Pathmark, ShopRite, and Grand Union. State and federal mediators negotiated with both sides for four hours before calling it quits today. They're all scheduled to go back to the bargaining table table tomorrow morning in Parsippany, New Jersey. Ralph? There is a small neighborhood restaurant in the East Village. It is called Orhidea. It's been serving Italian and Ukrainian dishes for some 27 years, and the people who eat there obviously like it. Ordered a bus and headed uptown to join a picket line this afternoon. They marched outside the home of the man who owns the building in which the restaurant is located. The reason? Well, he wants to hike the rent 500%. That means owner Maria Piteradecki will have to close. As she told Allison Field, she's an old 58-year-old widow. The restaurant is all she knows. Maria, when you look around this restaurant, how does this make you feel, this place? Terrible. Because to me, like it's like my home. And I have to close it, leave it. Legally, he's right. But he got no conscience, no heart. After 26 years, if he raised me double, I understand. But not five times. Maria's lease runs out February 29th unless her landlord, Sidney Wiesner, decides to negotiate the matter. This small business will go out of business if he does not. And Ralph, expand the Carnegie Hill Historic District. That was the call today by Manhattan Borough President Andrew Stein and City Council Member Carol Maloney. At present, the district extends from 5th Avenue to Lexington and from 59th Street to 86th Street. Preservationists want to extend that boundary north to 96th Street. And the reason why? Because the area is home to some of the finest examples of turn-of-the-century architecture. Some 200 buildings built prior to 1900 and between 15 to 20 townhouses erected after 1900 are said to be of exceptional quality and should not be lost to developers who want to tear them down and put up modern structures. Landmarks Preservation Chairman Gene Norman spoke and listened at an Eastside Forum today and Jim Van Sickle spoke with well, Borough President have Stein. I a lot of uh, some real estate developers uh, who are going to object to it but uh, I was elected by people and uh, I think the people in this community, I was born here, I live here now and I know that people in this community want to preserve it. If you don't preserve the past, you have no future. It has been more than two years since widening the historic district was originally proposed, and it will be some time yet before a final decision is finally made. And we have more to tell you. We'll be happy to report that a two-year-old girl is on the mend after a life-saving operation here in New York. And a mass resignation tops the news in Lebanon tonight. Stay with us. This Wall Street Journal Consumer Newsline is sponsored by TWA. Owning a home may be a good investment again, but just how good depends on where you live. Prices are expected to accelerate most in north central states and least in the south. Size of homes is also important. Small ones drawing the biggest crowds. Don't expect giant leaps, but experts say homeowners should be able to stay ahead of inflation for the first time in years. I'm Robert Hyde. When the Schubert Theatrical Company first called for bright new talent, New York Telephone also answered that call. For it was their telephone service that was making show business big business. And as Broadway lit up, so did theater switchboards. Today, a New York Telephone-centric system has revolutionized the Schubert's business with telecharge. Now they can handle thousands of ticket order calls each day. 
And what we've done for the Schubert's, we can do for you. Call us. We've got a phone system that can help. New York Telephone. For nearly a century. Answering New York's call. And now, the winning words from your Pontiac dealer. Sunbird giveaway. Yep, we're giving away a new 84 Sunbird. You can see one at any participating Pontiac dealer or at the Greater New York Auto Show. It's a honey. Now, don't just sit there staring. Come over. Register at any participating Pontiac dealer or at the show at the Coliseum. That's all it takes to win a brand new Sunbird. Wish I was eligible. So if you haven't talked to your Pontiac dealer, you haven't shopped for the car, be a winner. That dress is irresistible. Mmm, so is your Aramis. I have an idea. Why don't you go in and say goodnight all, time to go home? Oh, that's brilliant. Yes. Only nobody's gotten here yet. Nobody. <laughs> Aramis invites you to pick up six grooming products. Your bonus with any $10 purchase of Aramis, Devon, or Aramis 900. Now at all Macy's and Bamberger's. Lebanon's President Amin Jemael is facing his toughest crisis since taking power with the civil war intensifying and his government walking out. The Muslim Prime Minister was on and his eight-man cabinet handed in their resignations today. It was a move meant to cool off the recent battles between Muslim rebels and the Lebanese army, but the action has had little effect so far. The fighting raged for the fourth day with the rebels taking over the main route road to Beirut airport and to the U.S. Marine base. Since Thursday, about 150 people have died and more than 500 wounded in the fighting. After accepting the resignations, Jemael went on state radio and television. He called for another ceasefire, urged rival Muslims to join national reconciliation talks. Another call for a ceasefire in Lebanon was sounded from Vatican City. Pope John Paul II said hope is fading for a non-violent solution to this division in Lebanon. Speaking to a crowd of 25,000 in St. Peter's Square, the Pope appealed for an end to what he called the bloody clashes and intense bombardments of the past four days. Earlier, the Pope celebrated Mass and made what he termed a sorrowful appeal for peace in Lebanon. Anna? And Ralph, here at home, doctors at the NYU Medical Center in Manhattan are expressing hope tonight for a two-year-old girl from Iowa. Little Candace Gerlach was moved out of intensive care today. On Thursday, she underwent a rare and very delicate operation to remove a tumor on her spine. That tumor kept her from walking, standing, or even sitting. And if untreated, it would have killed her. Today, her doctor said that her improvement should be slow, but it should also be steady, and that he's extremely optimistic that Candace will walk someday. Many people were on hand tonight at Flushing Hospital in Queens. They were there to honor one of Hollywood's finest. Actress Patricia Neal received the Flame of Healing Award for her work with stroke victims. Miss Neal, a recovered stroke victim herself, devotes much of her time to helping other victims. I love helping people who have strokes. It's a horrendous thing to, to live through. And one's got to, you know, you... you I see people all the time and they, they, you know, you look at them and they start crying. I remember doing that too. Miss Neal received the award as part of Flushing Hospital's centennial anniversary celebration. Still ahead, we have new word on what has happened to Soviet leader Andropov. And we know where President Reagan is. He's preparing for a trip to his hometown. Stay with us. Among the cars of the future at this year's auto shows are these advanced designs from Audi's German engineers. Refined in wind tunnels, they slice through air with ease and agility and with almost no wind noise. But unlike other car makers' prototypes, you don't have to wait years to drive them. You can experience the luxurious new Audi 5000s, the most aerodynamic wagon and sedan in America today. Audi, the art of engineering. how many of these motor oils would love to make this claim? Well, this one can. Mobile One. This February, buy five quarts of Mobile One in this easy pour resealable plastic container and drive away with a $3 rebate coupon on the official oil of the Winter Olympics. In this Olympic year, United Airlines salutes the best friends an up-and-coming athlete could ever have. Mom and Dad. Come run with me. Time for practice, son. Fly with me. Spring.
Spread your wings and reach up to the sky with me. Together we can go the world just one better. Climb with me, soar with me, reach it higher than you've ever been. United, we know how important it is to have a friend standing by you every step of the way. We are proud to be the official airline of the 1984 Olympic Games. You're not just flying, you're flying the friendly skies. There's a new explanation tonight as to why Soviet leader Yuri Andropov has been out of sight since August. The West German newspaper Express says that he's recovering from complications following a kidney transplant. The paper reports that Andropov is working about two days a week and that he will soon be carrying a full workload. The report is attributed to a Soviet expert in the Bonn government. Andropov has been reported to have kidney and heart problems, but the Soviet Union says he's been laid up all these months with a very bad cold. The President of the United States, however, President Reagan, will celebrate his 73rd birthday tomorrow by going home again. Following his weekend at Camp David, Mr. Reagan will return to his hometown of Dixon, Illinois. There's going to be a parade, a visit to the restored house he grew up in, and then a speech at his alma mater, Eureka College. The trip will also kick off the second week of Mr. Reagan's re-election campaign. The president has outlined many of his familiar themes since emerging last week as an official candidate for re-election, and one of his comments on the stump inspired tonight's commentary by Gabe Pressman. President Reagan says many of the homeless are that way by choice. It's really depressing to hear that. For more than two years, we've followed this story. The president is sadly mistaken. We have found that most of these people are not homeless by choice. They're homeless and hopeless because they've been overwhelmed by forces beyond their control. They're frightened people, lost souls. Many used to be just like us. The president, we think, is a compassionate man. How can he be so insensitive? Are homeless folks less than people? Is it in the American tradition to blame the victim for his misery? It is a fact, as the president noted this past week, the problem has been aggravated by local policies that released many patients from institutions. Many others, though, have been thrown into the streets because they can't get jobs, because they can't afford to pay the rent. And when the president says people sleeping on grates is a problem we've had even in the best of times, he can't be getting information directly from the streets. He can't possibly know how frightened some people are about going into public shelters where they may be ripped off or injured by violent street people. We wish Mr. Reagan could talk to some of those we've talked to. Who expects it's going to be like this later on in life? You can't, you can't, you can't, you can't realize. How would you finish this sentence? Help me, I need a home. <laughs> The president is a great communicator. He's got to be more sensitive, though, to fellow Americans in desperate need. This is Gabe Pressman. Gabe's comments can be heard every Sunday night right here on News 4. Comments from Sal Marciano next. We'll have the latest, he will, on the big Yankee trade. And he and we will tell you all about the hockey action today, including the Devils. Maybe next. we'll report it instead. What do you I'm say? Give him okay, a break. Sal. Nah. Give him a break. Welcome to La Cage au Paul. Everything you've ever wanted in a Broadway musical, but nothing you'd expect. It's a brand new scene in opening, we're growing every day. We're closer now than ever, come celebrate today. See Siemens first for beautiful furniture and terrific grand opening savings as all Siemens locations celebrate another new Siemens showroom in Smithtown on Wisconsin Highway near Jericho Turnpike. Now is the time to see Siemens. Now in Smithtown, Long Island. The way to a beautiful house.
Scirocco. It's not a car. It's a Volkswagen. This is in from Revere, Massachusetts. The police there tonight are rounding up suspects in a crackdown on video poker games. In raids on some bars yesterday, they arrested several people for handing out cash payoffs, and then they seized 14 machines. As with many others of these probes, the investigation began with a tip-off. But in this case, the tips came from the wives of the players. They were fed up with their husbands gambling away the paychecks. Hardly uh, seems fair. I'm betting there's going to be a lot of problems in those households. Tonight. Sal? Yes. Anna? <laughs> Sal? Well, Anna? <laughs> anyway, <Craig> an introduction. <laughs> Tremendous introduction. If coming events cast their shadows, Bruce Souter could be the Yankees' new bullpen ace. First Goose Gossage left for the Padres' megabucks. Now George Frazier has been traded to Cleveland for Toby Harrah. George Steinbrenner, it's early February. Do you know who's in your bullpen? Nobody. This could mean Roy Smalley going to St. Louis for Souter because Tommy Herr's knee is questionable and Neil Allen can hold the fort. Steinbrenner has always wanted the gritty Harrow, who was a four-time All-Star third baseman in 13 years with Cleveland. The Yanks need more right-handed power. Toby will be a part-timer for the first time in his career, platooning with Craig Nettles, working part-time at shortstop as well. Harrow owns a lifetime batting average of 267. Frazier was the Yankees' workhorse out of the bullpen. Cleveland also gets minor leaguer Otis Nixon. He could be a regular outfielder with the Indians after stealing 94 bases in Columbus last year. Busy schedule in the NHL. The Rangers skating in Los Angeles. They're tied at one all late in the first period. Let's take a look at the highlights nine minutes into the game. L.A.'s Brian McClellan, a backhander past Ron Scott on the short side. one nothing Kings. Six minutes later, Rangers on the power play. Pierre LaRouche with his 38th of the season. A tie at one. They're still playing in the first period. At the Meadowlands, Minnesota beat the Devils 3-1 to one. yesterday. The Devils broke an eight-game uh, winless streak, so here we go again. The only score of the first period, Minnesota's George Ferguson beat Chico Resch. 17 seconds into the second period. On the break, Tom McCarthy scored a shorthanded goal for the North Stars. 2-0, Minnesota. Two minutes later, Al McAdam in front. A wrist shot, 3-0, Minnesota. New Jersey managed only 30 shots on goal. Don uh, Beaupre stopped Don Lever twice on the sequence. Phil Russell popped New Jersey's only goal with five seconds left, a 3-1 final. The best thing that happened to the Islanders' five-game losing streak was a weekend home-and-home -home shuttle with the Penguins. Yesterday, the Isles won 6-5 at home, 5-4 today in Pittsburgh. Four ties in the game. Late in the second period, Islanders' Thomas Johnson, the second goal that scored tied at three, a wrist shot, 4-3 Islanders. 15.30 into the second, Mike Bullard, his second of the game, a backhand pass. Melanson were tied at four. Less than a minute later, Johansson shot a deflection off John Tonelli into the net. The Islanders win five to four. Adams division action in Buffalo. The third place Nordiques beat the Sabres two to one. Here's the game winner, 1-1 one, one through the second period. Quebec's Randy Molar with a wrist shot past Tom Barrasso. The Nordiques led 2-1 and won by that score. Elsewhere in the NHL, Detroit won in Boston 6-5. The Red Wings with five third-period goals, two by Ron Duguay. Calgary won at home against Vancouver 4-2. A final in overtime, Montreal and uh, Winnipeg a tie at two. Washington blasted Edmonton 9-2. Philadelphia smothered Toronto 7-0. Hartford won in Chicago 4-3. In college basketball, Villanova's Dwayne McLean is making it a habit. Last Sunday, his last second shot beat Arkansas. Today, McLean beat the buzzer in a 77-75 win against Syracuse. Freshman Dwayne, the Pearl Washington game high with 27 points. He tied it at 73. Close game, blown over by seven, six minutes left. Harold Presley with lots of iron. It dropped. Syracuse tied it at 75. Freshman Greg Malone with 53 seconds left with a pop. Four seconds to go. Dwayne McLean over two men, two of his 18 points. Villanova wins 77-75. Eight of their last nine. Villanova now 11-8, and 7-2 in the Big East. I'll check out the NBA, show you Hale Irwin's good fortune if you keep it where it is. In the Old West, the Pony Express was begun for one reason, to speed communication. And as the speed of communication grew, so grew business. Today, business has been changed forever by the telecommunications revolution. Call them Tokyo. At the heart of this revolution are the many companies that are Contel. Good, that's great. From telephones to satellites, Contel, architects of telecommunication. Tonight, the sports report is sponsored by Continental Telecom. <laughs>
Don't let Delta's low fares fly by you. Take advantage of our low discounts and super service. The Delta professionals are always ready when you are. Across America, 7-Eleven helps give you the freedom to be a midnight chef, a local hero, a free spirit, part of the team. Freedom to be on time by not standing in line. 7-Eleven's business is based on freedom. So now we're a major sponsor of the 1984 U.S. Olympic team, giving great athletes the freedom to pursue their dream of becoming the best. 7-Eleven. The dream begins with freedom. This year, 36 automobile manufacturers are offering you 266 models. So choosing a new car can be very difficult. Make it easier. Take somebody's word for it. But not mine, not a friend's, not some car salesman's. Take America's word for it. Get a Cutlass. Oldsmobile Cutlass is number one in America. Get it with the front-wheel drive of Cutlass Sierra or the out-front styling of Cutlass Supreme. Take America's word for it. Get a Cutlass. From your good old, good old guy. A free Sunday for the Knicks and the Nets, a showcase performance by Larry Bird in Boston. The Celtics winning their ninth straight with a late rally against the ever-improving Pistons. Fourth quarter, Larry Bird helped wipe out a six-point Detroit lead. That's a left-handed scoop. Bird scored 28, grabbed 19 rebounds. Isaiah Thomas at one end, Parrish at the other. Parrish with uh, 36 points. Here's Isaiah with the scoop. He tied it at 126 with eight seconds left. They went to OT. In overtime, Boston's Kevin McHale made a key block, leading to a quick transition basket by Parrish. Parrish with a season-high 36 points. The next time down, McHale with a jumper. Boston by four. McHale, the best sixth man in the NBA. And Kevin with a defensive rebound and then a jump hook. Boston by six points, all by McHale, who had 33. The Celtics by one second left. Isaiah with the last chance off the rim, grabbed by McHale. His 12th rebound, he had 33 points. The Celtics stopped the hungry Pistons by three, 137-134. There's lots of yakety-yak on the left coast about the Lakers working a deal with San Diego to get Bill Walton. The big redhead with the tender bone says he'd love to double post alongside Jabbar. No developments yet. Meanwhile, tonight, Los Angeles beat San Antonio 110-98. to That's Jabbar with the sky hook. He had 27 points. L.A.'s next possession, James Worthy at the end of the break. The Lakers held on to win 110-98. Good to see Michael Ray Richardson contributing to the Nets. Last night, he beat the clock in Chicago. Nets ball, a tie at 105. The last ticks on the clock. Richardson from three-point territory. Bang! And Stan Albeck was stunned. The Nets won at the buzzer, 108-105. Richardson season-high, 18 points. Lady Luck sat on the rocks bordering the 18th fairway at Pebble Beach today. She smiled on Hale Irwin, who cashed in to win $72,000 at the 43rd Bing Crosby Pro-Am. Ben Crenshaw finished way back, but his long putt at 12 over the mound took the 17-mile drive on the Monterey Peninsula and dropped into the cup. Hale Irwin on the par 5 18th, a stroke behind Jim Nelford. The blast headed for the ocean. It caromed off a rock onto the fairway, a shot that's now part of the Pebble Beach legend. Irwin's approach hit the stick. He birdied the last hole to tie Nelford at 10 under and force a playoff. On the second extra hole, Irwin out of a fairway trap onto the 16th green. He has called this the greatest second shot of his life. He used a two iron. Nelford, a lefty putter in his first PGA sudden death situation, missed his try for a birdie. And Irwin calmly sank his putt for a birdie and the victory. Lots of celebrities play in this tournament. The shot of the weekend, Clint Eastwood, a blast headed for the rough. Watch this reverse spin from the rough all the way down onto the green. Didn't go in, but no one and nothing messes around with the man they call Dirty Harry. The LPGA's Elizabeth Arden Classic at Turnberry Isle and FLA won by Patty Sheehan, the 83 player of the year, two strokes better than Sherry Turner. Alabama quarterback Walter Lewis figured he'd ride the pines in the NFL, so he assigned a three-year deal with the USFL's Memphis shootouts. Or sh or they're called the showboats, excuse me. <laughs> Reportedly worth a million dollars. Shootouts, showboats. You've got Clint Eastwood on And that mind. league could be anything. <laughs> <laughs> well, make my day, as they say. All right. <laughs> Coming up, uh, we go from Sal to Al, and we'll be right back. We'll find out what it will look like for you in the morning rush hour, weather-wise. And we'll also take you to a gathering tonight where you can feast your eyes on some gourmet delights. Rolanda did some tasting, too.
pardon me, Ma Bell, did you know with U.S. Tell you can call anywhere and business can save up to 40% on long distance? Anywhere in the U.S.? 40%? Don't give me them kind of figures, jockey. It's not happening. Right, Muggsy? Don't do that. It's a tick. U.S. Tell. Talk with us. Talk to me. Talk to me. Myrtle, are you still on? Talk to me. I love long distance. Talk to me. Let it run up. Now, A&P saves you money every week with warehouse price specials like these. Any variety of Purina 100 cat food in a six and a half ounce can this week, four for 89 cents. The food cats love to eat. Also, Purina dog chow in a 30 pound bag, now only $7.99. Bonus pack, nutritious dog food. And Listerine antiseptic mouthwash, the 18 ounce bottle, now a low $1.69. 30 cents off label. Kills germs on contacts. Save money every week at A&P, the supermarket with warehouse price specials. Give me a break. Give me a break. When you need a break, take a greater Fort Lauderdale break. Hollywood, Pompano Beach, Lauderdale by the Sea, Deerfield Beach. We've got just what you need, from the wildlife to the wildlife. I gotta have a break. What time shall I expect you back? Oh, springtime. I don't know. Take a break. Take a greater Fort Lauderdale break. Do you know me? I beat him in the movie Chariots of Fire. You didn't beat me. Well, I beat the chap who played you. Mind you, I couldn't beat your gold medals in the 20 and 24 Olympics. <laughs> hey, what happened to the check? The American Express card, that's what happened to it. You're still pretty fast, aren't you? <laughs> to apply for the card, look for an application and take one. The American Express card. I know. Don't leave home without it. We've just received this late word. Police in Brooklyn at this hour are investigating a triple murder in the Sheepshead Bay section. Three men, all in their late 20s, were found shot to death tonight in a house on East 5th Street. The police responded to the scene after getting a call from an hysterical man who said his brother and his friends had been murdered, and that is all we know at this time. Well, we are turning to much more exciting and better news because on Friday, Chinese around the world began to celebrate their new year, the year 4682. And today in New York's Chinatown, they put the finishing touches to the three-day party and it ended the way it began with a bang. Dragons and lions, fireworks, and lots of food to eat. All part of this annual festival. This, by the way, is the year of the rat. The dragon went from merchant to merchant, bestowing good wishes for the coming year and getting rid of any evil spirits lingering about. This new year was a particularly good one in New York because merchants reported a very brisk business. We've had some brisk weather, a little yes. too brisk for my taste. I hope it improves uh, in the coming week. Well, this is, this is where it is, and people kept it Why, here. in the and, studio? Yeah, or? So, <laughs> right sound. Is that what they were supposed to do? Yeah. You know, <laughs> in fact, maybe their dials will be frozen to Channel 4 after the weather we've got to tell you about. Let's take a look at what's going on out there right now, and you'll see that things aren't too bad. A little bit of shower activity and some mixed snow, but now... Things are getting better as we take a look at the statistics right now. 36 degrees for our temperature, relative humidity 79%. Winds out of the southwest at 9, and our barometer 29.58, and it is rising. If you look at this little blue spot on my shirt here, I put a pen. Look at that. You know, when was the last time you did that? You put a pen in the wrong way? Oh, did that in grammar wow. school. What a dope. Okay. Here's the satellite picture. You can see a lot of cloudiness over New York State, but things are starting to break up a little bit as we take a look. Low pressure system right now. That is moving away. That brought us the snow, and as it moves away. There is another storm back to the west. That'll be heading toward us. But until then, we have a few breaks in the clouds. Temperatures tonight with winds coming out of the south will only drop down into the low 30s. Then for tomorrow, that low pressure will move away and we're going to be getting a cooler flow of air. A few flurries possible, but there possibly will be a little bit of sunshine in the morning. Temperatures, though, during the day will continue to fall as high pressure comes out of Canada. That cold air will bring in more Arctic air. Temperatures falling through the 20s tomorrow 
maybe a flurry or two as that low pressure moves away. And then we will see clearing skies tomorrow night. Temperatures down into the mid-teens. And the way it is looking for Tuesday, we're going to have sunshine, but temperatures only in the low 20s. So here's our way our forecast shapes up for you. Overnight, look for partial clearing, but temperatures only down into the low 30s. Then for tomorrow morning on your way out the door, partly cloudy, still the threat of a flurry. Temperatures will be dropping into the upper 20s. And the rest of the day tomorrow, temperatures falling through the 20s with variably cloudy skies, breezy conditions, and a flurry or two. And the remaining five days shape up like this. We have tomorrow, as we said, a few flurries, temperatures falling through the 20s. Tuesday, partly sunny in 23. Wednesday and Thursday, sunshine warming through the mid-30s. Friday, partly sunny and a temperature of about 42 degrees. And if anybody out there knows how to get a blue spot out of a shirt, would you please give me a call on one of my favorites. Now You've been here long enough to put in for a new News 4 pen. Uh, oh, shirt. an official News 4 an pen. Official news Forget four. the shirt, though. Make no, my day. Don't put in for the shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Culinary masterpieces are a true art form, many think, and as a group of male chefs proved today, a hobby not only can be satisfying for the individual, but it can also help a good cause. Rolanda Watts reports. Chicken vegetable combo. Hundreds of people flock to the International House in Harlem today just to get a taste of these culinary delights. 114 men brought everything to the feasting tables, from roasts and vegetables to fish and chicken. This is the third year of this event, and it's appropriately entitled Men Who Cook. We have college professors, uh, businessmen, presidents of their own company, researchers, photographers. Uh, they just come from all over. And you know, I made uh, potato salad. And I have a own special way of doing my own the chicken. When you do something really well, it's a labor of love. It makes you feel good. And you're making other people feel good, too. Like your wife. <laughs> like my wife and others. I need to make her feel more happy about cooking. <laughs> what do you get out of cooking? I get a satisfaction of preparing, doing, and watching others enjoy. Oh, it's a little excitement and something to do when you're at home out of the, the mad rush of the everyday world. It's been a hobby of mine for about 20 years, and sometimes I think maybe I should turn it into a profession. <laughs> I think that's why everybody's turning out. They want to find out who is cooking, why they are cooking. And what it tastes like. And what it tastes like. <laughs> okay. right. If you're we serious about food, this is like dying and going to heaven. <laughs> <laughs> it's got to be what heaven's like. Did you ever, many of the folks we spoke with today said they mainly came here out of curiosity to see if men really can cook. And almost everyone we spoke with said they they can. But the men who cook are gentlemen who've opened their hearts and kitchens to more than just the folks here. Proceeds from today's event are targeted to the Children's Arts Carnival. It's an independent art school based in Harlem that's dedicated to the creative self-expression of children. Rolanda Watts, News 4, New York. A little creative self-expression going on there, I thought. It's nice to see the men are good in the kitchen. <laughs> good night. See you next week. Good night. You think I'm going to follow that? <laughs> Introducing the amazing Renault Encore. Look how it feels to mold to the road with four wheels suspended independently. Feel it flow through hairpin curves. Look how the new Encore feels as it almost ignores gas pumps and provides front wheel drive for extraordinary cornering. For an amazing 5755, the new Renault Encore. Amazing. See your local New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, AMC, Jeep, Renault dealers. The ones to watch. When NASA launches the Hubble Space Telescope, man will see seven times farther into the cosmos. 
Perkin Elmer is behind it. Perkin Elmer, the science and computer company that built the world's first 32-bit super mini computer. Perkin Elmer also solves problems for business right here on Earth with one of the world's largest families of micro and mini computers. Perkin Elmer, the science and computer company where solutions come first. Sounds good, doesn't it? Actually, it's a faulty and dangerous exhaust system. To be on the safe side, you should have yours checked regularly. I'm your local man from Meineke, and we'll inspect your exhaust system free of charge. And if there's anything wrong, we'll give you a mufflergram, a free written estimate. We'll never sell you more than you need, and we won't start without your approval. And at Meineke, you'll love the price. Gone from 1893 to 2695. Visit your local independently owned Meineke shop today. For making business travel a pleasure and providing a bonus program that lets me credit mileage from other airlines to my Eastern account and therefore earn free travel to London, Rome, South America, and other exciting places, it gives me us. us great pleasure to present these wings to Eastern Airlines. You really earn them. This has been a presentation of News 4 New York. News 4 New York, be there. No children, the housing controversy tomorrow at 9. Tonight on the Sunday late night movie, Eric Estrada is Honey Boy. He's a lover. <laughs> He's a fighter. I can handle anybody. He came from poverty. You're nothing. A burning desire to be champion. But he needed a woman's help to get to the top. This kid's money in the bank. You got exactly what you wanted. And now they're sticking it to you. Now you're gonna cry because it hurts. Eric Estrada and Morgan Fairchild star in the NBC late night movie, Honey Boy. Being the best takes 10 times more than just being good. Sometimes I wonder if it's worth it. 7-Eleven is a major sponsor of the 1984 U.S. Olympic team, giving great athletes like Terrell Biggs the freedom to become the best. Just imagine getting that gold put around your neck. Then I know that all this work will pay off, because I'm going to be there someday. 7-Eleven, the dream begins with freedom. We all dream, but for most of us, our dreams remain dreams. George, you put the garbage out yet? But now your dream could come true with Lucky Dream Wingo. With $3 million in cash and prizes to win, the richest Wingo game ever. Prizes like this super Plymouth Voyager. And cash, the post has already paid out $6.5 million in prize money. Now it could be your turn. George, tell me I'm not dreaming. It's true, we won. <laughs> so don't just dream. Play Lucky Dream Wingo in the New York Post. When I go to an oriental restaurant, I want to order everything. But I don't want to make a pig of myself in public. Now that Benihana has introduced eight frozen restaurant classics, I have all the oriental food I want right in my own home. Like sirloin pepper steak, chicken with mushrooms, oriental vegetables with shrimp. I used to love eating out. Now I love eating in. Benihana yeah. frozen oriental restaurant classics. We were either going to make them great or we weren't going to make them at all. No diet in the world will help you lose weight until you do one thing, control your appetite. With Dexatrim, I was able to control my appetite, and I lost weight. The Extra Strength Dexatrim Diet Plan, the strongest appetite control formula you can buy without prescription. Dexatrim helps you eat less and lose weight. Dexatrim curved my desire to eat. I lost weight because I ate less. Extra Strength Dexatrim, no appetite control capsule works harder to help you lose weight.